right. Hey, guys, welcome back to Coffee Talk. I'm here today for the first time with Michael Grisella. Hey, Michael, how you doing? Hey, good to be here. And it's great having you here. So today's today, we don't actually have a topic aside from, hey, we're going to get to know Michael a little bit. All right. And we're going to break that open with you and get to, get to knowing what you're about, what the ministry's about, because here you are, the Director of Family Faith Formation and first year in. And on top of that, let's see uh, where it goes. Maybe we can waft into talking about the young church. And um, I don't know, we'll just kick it around. Yeah, so, absolutely. It's good <laughs> having you here, man. So welcome to the, the podcast. And see, so you got the cup of coffee, nice and hot, or at least, well, at least a few minutes hot. Yes. So, <laughs> so how you doing? What's uh, what's good? Tell, actually, let's let's start with this. Tell us a little bit about yourself. All right. Um, well, uh, I'm a married man. I have uh, two children. So my, <clears throat> my wife is uh, Kate, and uh, she's actually a former youth minister and DRE mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. And um, I have a three-and-a-half-year-old, Joseph, who is in the, the school here at St. Greg's and loving it. And uh, Peter is almost one month, one month, one year, um, and he just started crawling, not crawling, um, walking with like his walker, his wheeled walker. Mm. And so, uh, you know, just trying to, in that, in that time when you don't know what milestone he's going to make next. Uh, so awesome family at home. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Live in Amherst. Right. So local up here in the North towns. Very yep, good. Yep. Very good. Now we go, we go back a ways. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. Good 12 years or so I'd say. Yeah, I think so. How did we meet? Where where did we meet? Um, well, because you, you being in youth ministry, and I was actually the uh, religious ed director at St. Pius. Right. Uh, it's a small world, right? But um, yeah, prob- probably through things in the diocese or different things we were doing in ministry. Oh, or, and also the young adult ministry. Oh, right. Was yeah, that that's Re? right. Yeah, Re back, re back then. Yes. That's right. It's oh, like man, renew, that's... revive. <laughs> Every month was a re something, reinstall maybe. They never mentioned that one, but yeah, yeah. Well, wow, that, that throws me back. Yeah. Um, okay, so looking back, frisbee. oh frisbee, frisbee. Oh yeah, you yeah. know, yeah. Ultimate frisbee down yes. at Delaware oh, Park. Those are good times. Oh, uh, oh yeah. There's nothing like getting out there and just whipping that thing around. You know, I, I used to love playing ultimate frisbee. And nothing makes me more proud than when Joseph. Uh, you know, at the age of three, he, he, he threw a Frisbee. <laughs> he can throw a Frisbee better than some adults that I know. Ah, um, so we're going to get him out on the field. Frisbee soon. is a value <laughs> for me. Right. So, Oh, I love that. Yeah. I, I, I loved going back, uh, to that Delaware park and playing. Oh yeah. Ultimate Frisbee. And then going out afterwards, we would hit up. Uh, some of those spots over there for either a nice little pop or some tacos or a sub or there was always yeah. something being being had out there. But that was that was great. Oh yeah, you get your mind off the work day and just like mm-hmm. get some exercise, some good fellowship, yep. tacos. Oh, tacos. We love tacos around here. Um, wow. I, I remember us going kayaking. I think we went up to oh, yeah. was it Montezuma's or. Yeah, Something um, like that. Iroquois. That's it, Iroquois. 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 That that was cool. It was uh, that was a good day out there. Uh, I still have my kayaks, but I haven't put them to use in a couple of well, years. W- we do. They they're outside and they double as sleds. <laughs> so we pull the kids around in them. Do you really? Yes. That's awesome. But uh, yeah, every now and then, if I have a friend from out of town uh, and I have a couple hours, I'll take him out on on that. Or even the kids. We haven't taken Peter yet, but um, Joseph, um, he he goes with us sometimes. My wife broke her arm uh, this summer, so we couldn't do anything then. But uh, yeah, outdoors, you know, just nature yeah. and looking for animals, and especially for Joseph, it's like, hey, look at those turtles. And like the last time we went out with him, we were out in Batavia at a, at a, at a pond. Is like, I kid you not, there were like twenty turtles, twenty turtles, and loves Jeez. turtles now. So. Oh, man. It, why it's nuts about turtles we, we, oh yeah turtles he, yeah turtles it's all everywhere. about the turtles 
Hey, he prays about er, turtle. Pray, turtle, turtle, turtle. <laughs> <laughs> he prays for turtles at the uh, uh, dinner table. When, oh wow! So we say grace, and hey, what do you guys want to pray for? Turtles. <laughs> but my son should become friends with your son. Oh man, they'd have a lot of turtle talk. That's yes. for sure. Get him on the podcast, turtle. Yeah, and I don't think he even knows about the Ninja Turtles yet. Oh, see why he just got into Ninja Turtles okay. too. So it's he just watched the the old '90s movie. Okay. Um, at my parents' house, and he, he couldn't stop talking about it for days. And I was like, "All right, man, let's talk." <laughs> Great movies, like when I was a kid. But when I'm watching them now, I'm like, "This is this is probably not for a four year old. This is." Uh, uh, this is kind of a lot. I never thought of myself in that position. Be like, wow, like all this kung fu fighting is probably too much. But now that I'm like a parent, I'm watching my my son watch it. I'm like, ah, I don't know, ma. I don't know if that's uh, the right age for watching fight yeah, stuff. Yeah, you ever seen an X-ray of a turtle? It's just like, no. How do they have this shell just attached to their skeleton? Pretty much, it's amazing. It's incredible. No, I can't say I have. Yeah, it's like whoa. <laughs> My um, my in laws have turtles in their basement, and so my my like sister pet turtles, pet, or, turtles okay, pet turtles, just checking. invasive turtles are just <laughs> coming up through the sewers eating pizza. Uh, no, so my my sister in law, she loves animals, and she's a uh, a vet assistant, and so she has always loved animals. And when she was in college, she was bringing home and rescuing animals. So she brought home rats and like all this kind of stuff. Well, she brought home turtles and they thought that the turtles would, I don't know, make it a month. Here it is like 12 years later. What? And these turtles are still alive. And my, my in-laws, oh my, my father-in-law is still like taking care of these turtles. He's like, somebody take these turtles. I can't take them anymore. But he doesn't have the heart to like dump them off somewhere. But nobody wants to take them. And oh so he's gosh. stuck with them. So... <laughs> But he's taking good care of them. They're they're living their best life. So every time we go over there, Wyatt wants to go downstairs and see the turtles. We're just wait until they become teenagers. All oh, right. Well, I think at 12 years old, uh, they're probably ancient in the turtle yeah, world. But I don't know how long turtles I mean, live. Especially if they go mutant. All oh, right. So get the secret of the use in there. You know, yeah. Trip a little bit. But I know the um, <laughs> I don't know what the Galapagos turtles or they, they can they can be uh, eighty years old or something. But I never really realized that our little painted turtles have some longevity to them as well. Yeah, I had no. I honestly still don't even know much about them. You know, like it surprises <laughs> me. Maybe they live until they're like fifty. So yeah. maybe twelve is not that big of a deal. But I, I can't imagine them living super like I can't imagine lizards living long you know maybe I'm just totally wrong about this but I don't know <laughs> but kids man gotta love them oh yeah it, it brings me back to being a kid myself sometimes like when Wyatt's playing or the girls are playing and um you know just even talking about Ninja Turtles like I haven't talked about Ninja Turtles since you know I was a teenager yeah you know, it was just far from the mind and then here all these old <laughs> types of toys like gi joes and yep you know all the little army guys and stuff come popping up again i'm like oh i haven't thought about this in a while. okay let's play something you know so but yeah world of exploration when you're a parent that's for sure so anyways welcome back good to be here so you're here um how did you get here what, what brought you to the parish all right uh well um, the long story or the short story, I guess. So, oh, we, um, it's uh, how, did, how, did I, how did I get into ministry? How about we go back to there and then I'll get that's, into how right, I got right. into St. Greg's. Okay. You know that sounds great. Let's do that. Well, we got time. I got a cup of coffee to kill. So yeah, go for it. We're here for the people. All right. So I'm actually from Syracuse okay. and, um, came from a good Catholic family and then, um, had a, uh, kind of an internal conversion experience as a mm-hmm. teenager. Uh, I wanted to learn more about my faith, so I started <laughs> reading Scott Hahn books about theology, and I started out being a catechist, actually. They let us be catechist after we were confirmed in certain programs, so I got a start as a teenager and just tried to do better for the kids that I was teaching uh, and to learn more, to, to teach them better. Mm. And, um, yeah, so ultimately I... Uh, went to Franciscan University of Steubenville, so obvious St. Greg's connection right there. Hmm. 
and uh yes i went for theology and philosophy and uh it was was a great experience over in ohio Mm -hmm. Uh, i was on campus and i was a member of a household conquer through love household Mm -hmm. so it was a christian brotherhood and just uh you know just growing through different ministries just trying to get out of no pun no pun intended my shell right um turtles yeah Mm. um yeah so i mean i started out in like what I was comfortable with being like a sacristan or a liturgical minister and then kind of getting out of my comfort zone into nursing home ministry, then being like a resident assistant for about three years, which was, which was definitely out of my shell. Mm. And, um, you know, for for there, it was like building a Christian community and it was, it was a, it was a ministry and we're trained as, as ministry leaders. Um, and then I ended up going to grad school there as well for theology and ministry. Um, so I, uh, after that, my goal was to, um, become a professor of theology actually. And I, uh, got a full fellowship to Ave Maria university, uh, for a PhD. But, um, after a semester, I just decided, you know, the, the, the four and a half years more and kind of, I, I, I wanted to go more in the direction of evangelization mm. and also kids, um, as I was doing more mission work in schools and, um, you know, even, even through my class at Franciscan, just the idea of evangelization, just the idea of like helping to transform a parish really, uh, struck it close with me. Hey, oh so I, I just started like, you know, putting my resume out there and just like, Hey, I, I want to get into it. I want to get into it. I, I, I don't want to find, um, uh, a perfect place. I want to find like a place where I can do ministry, make a difference. Hmm. So, um, I, I just spread my net wide and, you know the the diocese of buffalo uh was kind of welcome welcoming to uh, people like myself you know they would uh kind of post what the needs were and and actually the the first offer i got was from father rob rob wozniak no kidding yes at Pius. no oh well at, 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 at um in newfane um saint brendan on the lake and uh, St. Brendan on the Lake in Newfane, it was a, really? one of the early cluster parishes. Wow. And you know, I was like, oh, I, you know, I really want to work with Father Rob Wozniak, honestly. But uh, I ended up on the throughway getting a call from St. Pius, um, which is a little bit closer to town. And uh, so I ended up taking that, that, that job. And I stayed there for about five and a half years. Wow. Yeah. And so just a lot of, there was a lot of transformation going on there, Pius. And um then, um, let's see. So, uh, but right down the road was St. Greg's. And when I went through the diocese for my, um, certification program to be a, uh, certified and kind of the local ways of being a religious ed director, um, you had to choose a mentor and I wanted to, and so I, I really admired what was going on at St. Greg's mm. like, uh, I, I admired that there were so many different options for programs uh, for faith formation and how it was very professionally run, um, you know, nice staff. And it seemed like it, it's kind of what I was aiming to make my program uh, to kind of take some inspiration from St. Greg's, mm. you know. And so I asked Joan Richmiller to be my mentor. And so oh, she's the best. Yeah. Yeah. So Joan Richmiller and uh, yeah. And so the rest is history. So then, um, oh. you know, maybe like 10 years later or so um, uh, I was, I was then DRE at St. Leo's in Amherst. Um, and uh, Joan kind of put a little birdie in my ear that she's retiring and uh the rest is history so wow it's pretty cool watching how people come up into and through ministry and how you're formed in that um but boy jonesy is just a legend and she did such a great job uh and to have you as i don't want to say understudy because that's not right but um to to have her have you under her wing and then bring you in here. That, that's such a great match. So glad that you're here, man. And yeah, on, me too. And on me top too. of that, you've had a lot of background in youth ministry too. So we're able to speak yeah, absolutely. a lot of the language as well. Absolutely. So. And because, uh, yeah, um, 
at when I was at St. Leo's, there wasn't any youth ministry at the time. Mm -hmm. And so I went here to get um, training essentially on how to, how to launch a youth group. And so the youth group uh, is still running at St. Leo's. Let's go. Yeah. And they're still actually going to Steubenville. All right. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of nuggets I want to be able to break out from this, if you don't mind. But uh, let's go back to your time in Steubenville. Yeah. Because, you know, we, we love Steubenville. Uh, Franciscan is just a, a great college. Their conferences is one of the early things in my own formation that really got me peaked into growing further, not only in my faith, but in youth ministry to begin with. And back when I was a core member... Um, it was maybe a couple years into being a core member when I went on my first Steubenville experience for the youth conferences over a weekend and really sparked me up. Up to that point, it was, it was probably the biggest thing that I was a part of to see young Catholics on fire, you know, that in hearing some great speakers, that was just, uh, <clears throat> powerful thing lit me up on fire and here i am you know maybe 20 years old you know just uh, super charged up and helped me to start taking ownership over my own faith of oh, i want to own this and not in a not in a childlike way but like how do i own this as a as a man you know and um that was just a powerful thing so for you going there what what made you pick it for school and um what other options were available during that time that you could have picked? And yeah, so um, well, uh, Scott Hahn was a big pull. Let me say that mm. Scott Hahn. But I was homeschooled actually, I was, and actually, you know, my mom passed away two years ago, and she was the type to. She was a very proud mom, and she collected everything. So now. I'm, I'm still sifting through all the papers that she left from my growing up, mm. <laughs> you know? And so I, I just kind of looking at those college letters actually. And, um, uh, I was looking at, uh, some of the local, uh, a local, uh, well, uh, Catholic school, a Catholic, uh, college in Syracuse and then here in Buffalo as well. And, um, and also some of the other, the, 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 the really, uh, colleges that had, committed themselves to like dynamic orthodoxy as well. But I, I, I thought that Franciscan was, was, was really stood out to me because of the community. Mm. Um, because it was, yes, it was a little bit of a bubble, but it wasn't as much as some places. Um, it was a little bit more engaging with the real world, um, while forming disciples, you know, in a dynamic orthodoxy setting. Mm. Um, and also the, just, just like the idea, like I remember one of the colleges I was looking at had maybe one or two kids that were studying what they called religious studies. Right. But at Steubenville, there were like 400 theology majors and everyone else was applying what they were doing into how to serve the church, how to be transforming the world through the gospel, you know? And so I just wanted to be part of that. Wow. I thought I could grow the most there. And so, of course, Franciscan offered the least um, tuition um, help of any of the colleges. But um, ultimately, we made that jump. And, and I was still looking at those bills like, hey, I wish that's what co college costs nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> well, hey, if you're called to a place, it's going to make it work. Yeah. You know, uh, one, one of my favorite memories being there, because I, I've been to the conferences a number of times. Yeah. but. I had friends that went there, and one of my buddies, uh, he had already graduated. He, maybe he had just graduated, and he's like, "Hey, I'm I'm looking to head back for the weekend. You want to come just stay at the uh, at the campus for the weekend, yeah. and um, just I can show you around and give you the tour, all that kind of stuff." I'm like, "Yeah, that'd be awesome." So we took a road trip down there, and we spent the weekend. It was a good weekend. Uh, loved being on the campus in a way that was, wasn't just like, hey, rush from here to here or here's where the next session is, but actually kind of be there. Um, but <laughs> I got a, a parking ticket in the, the that front circle. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I got a good circle. And so I, I was sitting there, I'm like, I don't want to pay this. And I, I ended up taking it, putting it on one of the security cars and... Took off for, 
for home after that. Oh, nice. So, I never had to pay it. Uh, it probably isn't the Franciscan way. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I, I haven't been I, back with my car. Not that I have the same license plate, but... <laughs> Confessions of a youth minister. <laughs> I, I got out of a parking ticket too behind the John Paul II library, actually. Oh, yeah? And so um, <clears throat> this one I owe to student training as a resident assistant. We were trained to write these very objective um, incident reports, which is still a, a, a skill that I use to this day at St. Greg's, right? Oh, yeah. But um, <laughs> I, I, there was, it was a handicapped spot, but it was literally blocked by snow. There was a fresh fall in snow, and so I just documented really well that there was no, no way for me to know that this was a handicapped parking spot unless I memorized this location. And so got out of it that way. Oh, look at, um, look still at happens to me. I'm also uh, I'm also a senior lecturer at Niagara University. Oh, yeah. yeah, and so I've gotten a couple parking tickets there as well. Uh, although uh, pulling the uh, faculty card has helped me so far, um, okay. but uh, <laughs> yeah, it pays to know somebody, right? Yeah. <laughs> look, look at this. These tough youth minister types, oh, yeah. you know. Ah, those religious church people always breaking the law. Always, always, the long arm of the law always finds us. Oh, uh, yep. Yep. God bless us. Martyrs, you know. <laughs> okay, so let's uh let's go back to that Steubenville experience. So after you had you'd finished school, uh, looking back on it, uh, being a part of that house, how much did that play in your formation? How valuable was having that fellowship, that brotherhood? Uh, within your house. Maybe you yeah. can explain what the house is and then what was the impact of that? Yeah, it was huge. Um, my first year there, I kind of resisted it because I was uh, trying to focus on my studies. But the the, the, the brothers in this house, they um, household, that is, they called it there, uh, just reached out to me and kept inviting me to things and they never gave up on me. Mm. And, uh, mm. you know, I just realized that, you know, as you said before, if, if you're called to do something, God will make it happen. And it, it really wasn't 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 uh, uh, that difficult to do. You know, it, it's a lot of commitment for sure, but it, it was so worthwhile. Um, you know, this particular household, it, it was different. There were so many households that you can pick from Steubenville, from all based on different charisms. And you know, really, if I had gone through and looked at every household, maybe I would have picked a different one, but. It was because these guys cared about me and, and they were different from me. So they were, they were, um, again, bringing me out of my shell, you know, which was, a, which was something I was dealing with at the time. I really needed to, you know, I was homeschooled and we didn't have all the homeschool communities that they have here in Western New York. I was from Syracuse. Mm. And, um, so, you know, I, I just wanted to, um, or, or they really helped me to expand, I think. Uh, and, and at the same time, to really know what brotherhood is, to be able to have accountability with each other, uh, live in community, um, pray together, and have fun together. Mm. And, and, you know, these guys, uh, you know, it was another 10 years or so. Um, and uh, actually, perfect example. This is my wife. Um, should I pick this up, actually? This is, I was saying, honey, I was just about to talk about you. I'm on a web show with Adam DeRose. And okay. yeah, you're, you're on a web show with us. And I was just going to talk about how <laughs> 10 years after college, I met the woman of my dreams and we got oh. married. Oh, vocations. Yes. <laughs> so, um, anything urgent, honey? Uh, All right. I love you. Bye, Kate. Bye. <laughs> All right, there she is. Oh, There's look the, at that! They're the kiddos, you know. So, love vocations. Oh yeah, you know. We could talk about that all day. Yeah. So it's ten, mm. ten years later, but household. They always said, you know, who's going to be at your wedding? Your household brothers will be. Ten years mm. later, they're there. Oh, that's they're awesome. They're there. Guys just kind of, you know, drove up from halfway across the country. Mm. Um, wow. Just real brotherhood. Do you still have relationships with them? Do you see, see them yeah. often? Or? Yeah. So a lot of, um, a lot of uh, uh, certain brothers I keep in touch with with frequently. Wow. Yeah. And so we, we uh, stay Love accountable. That. We stay um, just in touch with each other. 
Wow. Yeah. Well, that's amazing. Yeah. And um, one of my household brothers is actually Jason Everett. No way. Um, but um, he was not in my generation, so he's not one of um, my like chums, really. But but he's one of the he's people a- that we admire from from way back, even though he's a youthful youthful minister. Right. <laughs> he's he's, wow. he's a legend. He's definitely legendary. Yeah, and, and I, I I can't say there were no shenanigans. Uh, but they, they were, it. they were wholesome shenanigans. Like um, sheep on the roof. Type of stuff. Yeah. That type of thing. I mean, I remember one of the craziest things was, um, we had a sister household and we would prank each other mm. and the rules were always strict about visitation, but you would have to visit during open hours, like a strict period of time. And, um, and so I think that if we did it to them or they did it to us, there's something involving glitter the the whole room being full of like glitter and paper <laughs> crumpled up and um, like in the library which was about three blocks down there were signs of glitter from the common room wow yeah well shoot <laughs> uh, you know what I love hey. those types of pranks that's and then, uh, well, yeah that's the type of thing that just sticks around for a while and and one time the <clears throat> sister household um, the university was cracking down on this type of thing, of course. And um, they decided to do a nice prank for us one year, one time when we were out on retreat. And so they, they, they made pictures and they like wrote motivational uh, phrases on the wall. We're praying for you or household Bible verses. Mm. And, uh, and then there was this box of Cheetos that was upside down and closed. But as gravity did its thing, one day, one night we were in uh, the common room for rosary and all of a sudden comes right out on somebody's head. That'll do it. (laughs) (laughs) Awesome. I love that stuff. Yeah, we grew up doing a lot of pranks with my siblings and with my buds and stuff. And, you know, that that creates good fellowship as long as it's well-natured right um and have a good laugh at that there's a lot of joy in that um okay so that was your college experience stepping away from that um then you you got into the working world uh, actually you continued your studies then you got into the working world how did you meet kate in the midst of this like where where did kate pick up so um kate was in the background but we hadn't met actually when uh, i was at ave maria for a semester uh, in grad school, she was actually there as an undergrad. Mm. So we had common friends, but we actually never met as far as we know. Oh. Yeah. So um, we all ended up meeting actually on Catholic Match. And again, we had like common friends on Facebook and people that we knew in common. Mm-hmm. But we just kind of like, I think it, it, one thing it, it, it helped was just kind of dating intentionally, just like knowing that, um, you know, just like the, our, our intentions and our purposes and just meeting each other that way. Wow. So what what was that like being on Catholic Match? Were you eager for that? Was that something you were hesitant for? Um, well, I, I was on for a long time, actually. Uh, and I had a number of um, dates and relationships over the years from mm. Catholic Match. Uh, I'd say it was positive experience. Um, it, it, you know, it's just there are a lot of challenges with with uh, dating nowadays as a, as a Catholic guy, you know. And so I just... Uh, um, it's just a oh, it was a way of, of of I think being intentional, kind of looking back, and and of um, meeting someone that has your values as well. Right. Well, that, I mean, that's um, it's so important, but it's yeah. also hard to find. Well, that's hard to find. That's that's the that's the thing. Um, that's where I think Catholic Match really comes in. Mm. And uh, back yeah. back in my younger days, in my twenty days, yeah. Um, I was on Catholic Match for a minute. I was like, all right, I'll, I'll check it out. So I made a profile. And um, at the time, it was still pretty new. And so there was like a handful of people that were on there. Yeah. Like, I had already known like three of those people. And I was like, oh, no. Like, <laughs> I was like, I got to get off this thing. And so I never went back to it. I wonder if my profile is still up there. I need to. I never canceled it. So I'm not available. Happily married, people. All right. So, 
Okay, so how did you guys get married? Like, what was uh, how did you propose? When did you get to that point? Well, uh, so speed up to when we proposed. Okay. Well, actually, let's let's go back a little bit to the first date. All right. All right. Right. Take, take all right. There. So at Steubenville, they, you know, I, I knew this is a a girl that I wanted to possibly pursue. Mm. You know, and so Steubenville, they used to have a workshops catholic manhood and kind of the different ideas that uh different ministers had about that at the time and uh one of the ideas was the three stage date i think the idea was that um i was even talking to a teenager not not too long ago about like um they're dating somebody and i said well uh, does he take you out on dates And, and and she said no We've never been on a date. We've been dating for six months, but we've never been on a date. And so uh, I think the idea was to be intentional about, you know, providing for this lady, providing a good experience for her, um, m- making it clear what your intentions are, uh, and just taking initiative. And so, um, I- you know, I- I- in a way that, that, that leads you in a good direction. Uh, for the evening. And so what, what I ended up doing, so we, we had our first layer of the stage of the date was at Carabas. Mm. Yeah. Cause we're both have some Italian in us. Buongiorno. Yep. And okay. so remember we were, right. it was a full house. So I think they had us at the, um, uh, at the, the bar stool because that's where that was the only place where we could go. I remember there was like a, a door uh, right there and the kind of cold air was blowing on us. And I was just like, you know, one of those things was just like, just grabbing in there, doing, you know, whatever you want, honey, and just to whatever, you know, could, could get a good meal that I probably couldn't afford nowadays. <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, then we went to the Boulevard Mall, went for a walk, and then we went to the chapel, Adoration Chapel at St. Greg's. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I see it now. The three tiers. The three tiers. And it ended with adoration at St. Greg's. Oh, St. Greg's that. was always an important place for us. Mm. Um, and adoration. And here you are. Yeah. And for, for her, the significance of it was that um, I think that she <clears throat> often struggled with um, saying the rosary, like kind of keeping attention on the rosary. Mm-hmm. And so I think but when we were there, we quite quietly said a rosary. Mm. And um, and that was the first time she was able to go get through the entire rosary at the time. Oh, well, that that's how you know she's the one. Yeah. <laughs> so so now my my uh, mother in law uh, also has kind of a web show for her parish. Oh she's yeah. She's also a DRE. And yes, yes, yes. Denise. and yes, and um, one of the things that she does is is um, say the rosary for the community online every day. So when she comes to visit and it's time to say the rosary, she'll bring out the Mary statue and, you know, bring out and, and gather the kids around and they're just little kids. So they just play, but, um, it, it made an impression on Joseph because, uh, when, one day he's like, daddy, will you pray the rosary? And I was like, Oh, babe, sure. I can't say no to a three-year-old. <laughs> right. And, um, I was like, well, Joseph, are you going to pray the rosary too? He's like, no, me, me play you pray. And I was like, okay. Well, you know the uh, the cross of the father is a heavy one. <laughs> uh, I want to I want to take a little sidestep here right. for any guy who is sitting here listening to this, and you find yourself in that dating world where you're saying, "I've been dating somebody, but I have not taken my girl out for a date." Listen, <laughs> stop it, stop it right now. Get intentional. Take your lady out on a date. Yes. Dinner. Dinner. Don't skip the movie. Save that for later, right? Save that for down the road for dinner. You sit down with somebody, you talk to them, look them in the eyes, open the car door, you know, and and don't invite over a a, a text message, right? Uh, call her up. Ask her in person. Unless you're on the app, then get like the, the first digits, and then you call her, right? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I see a lot of this where there's this, it's not dating, it's just uh, wafting, right? It's just. Yeah, that was a problem when I was in college as well. Uh, and so that's why 
they always had these discussions with us, you know, trying to warn about this. And, you know, as far as I see, like something like Catholic match is just a, like some people get introduced by friends mm-hmm. uh, or, or another way like that. It's just a place to meet. You know, it's not a place for your yeah. relationship to live. It's not, it's not a lifestyle. Yeah. Um, yeah. If, if you're on one of those, those other dating apps, um, don't, don't actually come to elevate because, uh, you know, maybe we can, maybe you can meet your future spouse there or something, <laughs> but, um, the hookup culture, get away from it. We don't need that. We don't, you don't need that. Okay. Um, boy, we, we should talk about oh, the yeah. Catholic dating. Maybe another time I'll, I'll bring you back. Out oh, yeah. we, can, we can talk because we can spend a lot of time on this, but, um, Hey, gut check gentlemen, just do it. Just take her out on a date for the first date. Don't, don't get wishy washy of like, Oh yeah, we're just hanging out. You know, oh, yeah, we're just going to Netflix. You know, oh, we're just going to do. No, 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 no. Just go out on a date. You know, if you have, if you need date ideas, hey, Michael's here. He's got the three tiers, right? <laughs> That's it. Yeah, we, you know, we, we did do some, we had some good dates. We really did. Mm. So how is dating now? Like dating your wife now as opposed yeah. to. Yeah. So um, it, it's hard. Um, but, well. We have to make time. Yeah. And again, it's all about being intentional. So like yesterday, uh, our date was to have a little glass of wine and watch the, the Bills game. Mm. Um, you know, there's a, we had to include the baby in the date halfway through. But uh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. We're, uh, it, go ahead. It, it is harder after having kids and you're working and you're doing all yeah. that stuff. Yeah. But that that word is super important, intentional, because yes. if, if you just let time go and you don't square up to it, uh, then you lose track of your dates. And Ani and I right now, we, we're we trying to square up and get back into being intentional about our date time. And I want to be intentional with dating my kids, like taking them out for yeah. one-on-ones. You, you, know? you have girls, so, I, yeah, so I, we, I have not yet been blessed with daughters. Oh, just wait. It's a wonder. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> It, Lord willing, right? But um, I've got two girls. I've got one boy, and uh, this the, the new one is still a mystery. We won't know for another couple of weeks. Uh, number four is on the way, almost here. But um, having girls is just such a delight. And you had pointed this out. I've got a little sticker down here on my computer. Um, it's a quote from Izzy from just after our, our bravery trip, yeah. just, just a couple of weeks ago. And I took her out for a daddy daughter date and it was right after the retreat, crazy season of retreats and events. And so it was, it was a very long week. And the day after I came back, I was like, all right, we're, we're going on a daddy daughter date because she's been, she's been asking and I'll, I'll do this with the girls. Uh, and I just had daddy duty time yesterday. But anyways, while we're out, we went to Panera and got some hot chocolate and got a couple of treats. And I was just catching up with her and talking to, you know, about everything. And she's uh, she stops me. She's like, Dad, you're never home. And I'm like, kid. <laughs> you know, <laughs> in a way that like a daughter just hits your heart. Yeah. You know, like the big old eyes, you know, oversized hot chocolate with marshmallows on her face. Dad, you're never home. I'm like, oh, kid. Oh, and um and there's there's truth to that right and when because it's been crazy at work and so trying to juggle all of that and then sit down and, and hear it from your kid you have to make time you got to be intentional and during this this busy season i was not intentional of like setting aside work and time you know like there's just there's too much that you kind of get in a tunnel vision and then you wake up on the other side and you're like oh my gosh and so I, uh, I wrote down a little sticky note with that as a quote sitting at the bottom here because I want that to, I want that to sit and resonate a little bit um, and, and just readjust my, my schedule. And thanks to Izzy, my daughter, because of that intentional date of keeping me in a, a good check. Um, and yesterday I had Wyatt out. We did some exploring down by a creek, and I showed him how to use a knife and so we're cutting reeds and stuff like that yeah. and wood. 
Then we watched Star Wars for the first time. Nice. Oh, it was awesome. It was you so know, good. that that just reminds me of how, um, you know, God made us to have a mother and a father. You know, just like there are so many things that the the kids run to my wife for. Mm. You know, um, if you got a boo boo, you don't go to dad. You know, uh, you, you go to mom for that hug. Uh, or, but on the other hand, if you want somebody to trust you with a, with a knife, <laughs> it's going to be dad, right? It's going to be dad. Um, but so many things like that, just like, but it, it really, you know, I think fathers, we push them to, um, well, I guess there are some dads that maybe do some things that are a little unsafe, but maybe just to give them a little bit of room to jump, mm-hmm. give them a little bit of room and then they spread their wings. And it's okay for them to fall a little bit. Yeah. You know, it's okay to tumble a little bit and show them, hey, it's okay. You got to get up. Yeah. Yeah. It's like uh, bike training Izzy. Uh, So we were bike training her and she's she's on training wheels right now, but she was so afraid of falling uh, that she she just wanted to be perfect at it. So she kind of sat out a little bit and was like, "Ah, I can't do it. I can't do it because, you know, I'm I'm not going to be perfect. It's like, kid, don't don't worry about it. Where's that's going to happen is you're going to fall. And that's part of life. And so every time they fall, I tell them, it's, hey, it's part of, part of being a kid. Part of being a kid, you know. Let me scrape your knee. It's part of being a kid. Let me see it, you know. And, you know, they'll ask, you know, they'll have their tears and stuff. I won't sit there and be like, oh, shut up, kid. But, you know, hey, it's part of it, kid. So get up. You okay? Yeah. All right. See, it's not so bad. Um, and with bike training, I mean, that that's just that perfect example because if uh, – you fall. I mean, that's a big ouchie, you know, unless you're doing it right on the grass, but that can even be spooky. But if you're riding on the concrete, you're going to get a scrape, you know, just, okay, I'm right here. I'll, I'll try to catch you if I can, but I'm not going to always be here to catch you. So you have to do it. Okay, dad. So this year she, she really started taking to doing the training wheels and in the spring we'll get her off the training wheels and get her <laughs> really doing some tumbles. But those types of lessons bring a lot of clarity as a parent, you know, of like, how do I bring this to a kid? You know, and then you see all those things growing up of your parents doing that for you. Like, Oh yeah. Right. I fell a number of times when my dad was there, but you know, I still fell, you know, okay, we'll pick yourself up. Oh, all right, dad. So, but yeah, mothers and fathers, it's, uh, such a blessing. And so I'm, I'm glad to be able to be a father to my girls and my boy. Um, so, hey, maybe someday you'll get a daughter and you can – actually, there's a soft spot for when they get the boo-boos because, you know, I don't know you just want to go up to fight for your, your daughter. The son's different because you're like, all right, pal, you know, let's rumble around a little bit. But the girls, oh, they just get you right in the heart, you know. I'm a softy. So, anyways, but you've got the two boys, and um, oh no, we're skipping some steps here to your wedding day proposal, wedding proposal, and then you okay. Got the boys. So the proposal, um, it was on Thanksgiving Day really? in Syracuse at my home parish. We went mm. to morning mass, and then over near the Mary statue, uh, pop the ring. Oh. Yeah. Were you nervous? Yeah. Nice. That was pretty yeah, nervous. Yeah, went, went down on one knee, learned that the left knee is for human beings, the right knee is for God. I got to remember that, though, sometimes in church, especially with uh, carrying a toddler or a baby. But I've never heard of this. Yeah. What, what is this? Well, you know, back in the days of uh, um, medieval times hmm. and fealty and whatnot, you would genuflect. You would you would kneel before your king or your queen, right? Mm-hmm. But you would, uh, when you went down on one knee, you would reserve your left knee for the king and your right knee for God, like th- for the Eucharist. Really? Yeah. Oh, it's the first time I've heard that. Ah. Uh, so you went down on your left knee. Left knee. Yes. Wow. So she said yes. What'd you do after that? Um, you know, uh, 
we we were visiting my parents in Syracuse. We had some uh, champagne and uh, Thanksgiving dinner, and I think we what a put way up to a celebrate. lot of pictures oh. on Facebook. What a way to celebrate! Hey, yeah. cheers! All cheers right. for taking the dive in. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's great. So then, you guys got married. Wedding day. Okay, so we got married at um, St. Teresa in South Buffalo, where I was the music director and organist for that over was five years. Parish. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, beautiful Gothic church in the city. And, you know, what we can, what I remember most about it was the, the singing. You know, just like the whole, uh, we just had a lot of people that were really faithful, excited Catholics, you know, who, who just, you, you could just, it, it reminded me of Steubenville or Ave Maria where everybody is, is singing enthusiastically. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just kind of brought everything before God and showed everyone our intention and, and asked them also for our, for their support, oh. um, made it official. That's beautiful. Yep. And then we had our reception at St. Leo's where I was, uh, the DRE, uh, at the time as well. Was that in the new, the, the was that new, just open? the new, um, well, uh, a couple of years before we got married, I guess it got, it was opened. Mm. Yeah. That new, uh, parish center. Right. That's beautiful. So that there. was a nice facility. Nice. So we got both of my parishes at the time involved. Yeah. Well, that's exciting. Okay. So you established your family. Yes. And entered into vocation hood and then you had two boys. Yes. Yep. Um, we did not, um, we were not really given any time. <laughs> we had a honeymoon baby, essentially. Yeah. And uh, nine months later, he was born. Ding, ding, middle ding, of COVID. <sighs> and so we, um, you know, our wedding was pre-COVID. Um, we didn't have to deal with COVID. We didn't know what COVID was. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, and so that was that was trying times, you know. Just but it was it was good in a sense because it, I was home from on uh, uh, during lockdown, and had more time with the family that way. Obviously, mm-hmm. um, nothing with the birth went like we were planning. Like Kate had it all planned out. She had like a laminated sheet to give to the doctors about exactly how everything's going to go, and of course, mm-hmm. nothing happened that way at all. Um, and he ended up in the NICU for oh, no. a couple of days, oh. but it all worked out and, uh, you know, definitely felt a lot, uh, I felt a lot of connection to St. Joseph, who we named him after mm. in a couple of ways. And one, just kind of that providing for the family through difficult times. I think of the, the Holy family in Egypt, uh, but also, uh, in, in, uh, buying our house, uh, especially, uh, you know, in, in Amherst, uh, it's kind of an established community. And so houses mm-hmm. are a little bit older mm-hmm. and, uh, doing a lot of, a lot of maintenance, a lot of work. Uh, my first project was install installing, uh, uh, or repairing the roof on the shed. So I got really, really used to St. Joseph <laughs> and actually <laughs> I had a hammer I, on your, I, I, on your side, on your yes, tool belt. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, um, actually I got some remote preparation for that as well. So while I was still out of my apartment. Um, Ridgely Road, actually. Mm. Um, I, I was just trying to get ready for being a husband and provider in that way. Mm. So I actually built uh, a desk out of out of just pine wood, essentially, and just stained it and wow. you know glued it and everything, and just tried to learn woodworking. Learn learn a lot of the start getting tools to get ready for home ownership someday. Mm-hmm. And uh, started to get get really close to St. Joseph. Wow. Yeah. So you named your your first Joseph. Yeah. Um, what's the age difference between uh, the two of them? So the next one came up. He's only, was he eight months old? Oh, how uh, old is Peter? J- Peter is, um, this is his birthday month. Oh, okay. So he's going to be uh, one in, in uh, about two weeks. Really? Yeah, just, yeah. Wait, when, what is his birthday? Um, the 19th, November 19th. Mine's the 17th. Oh, okay. Yeah, nice. Okay. It's a good time of the year. Yeah. Mm. We've got six birthdays, almost seven birthdays in November um, in my family. So this is the uh, 
This is that crazy month. of <laughs> Everyone's birthday is just stacked up here. Um, okay, so Peter comes on the scene. And, yeah. And so now you've got two. And that's, uh, how is that managing the yeah. household and two? Yeah. Um, well, in, in between that time, so um, <clears throat> Pete, Pete, Joseph was about a, a year and a half old. Um, <clears throat> when my mom passed away, actually. Mm. Um, so that was definitely a, a major event. So, uh, she, fortunately she got to, she got to meet Joseph, you know, and got to get to know him and see her first grandchild. But it was about, uh, about a month or two after that, that Peter was conceived actually. Mm. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's, Everybody was saying, gosh, you know, how are they going to interact with each other? Is there going to be sibling rivalry? Maybe so, but they, they really love each other. Mm. They really do. Like, they they, they uh, really love being together. And, and, yeah, there's always a little bit of issue with this or that. But, um, you know, they, they are so much better together. Awesome. Yeah, and, you know, I always, I always kind of felt um, like my hair was a little weird. Well, he, Peter's got my hair, and it's just like, <laughs> hey, now I feel validated. I feel, you know, you, know, you go to, you go to the hair hair cutters, and like, you know, one thing is that they talk about when, when you're younger. They always ask you what you're doing in life, yeah. And you know, it's like ministry or theology major or something like that. And so it gets into all these conversations. That's like, well, you got this really straight pokey hair, <laughs> you know, every time. And um, nowadays, when you get a little bit older, um, nobody cares what you do anymore. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it seems like but but uh it uh it, it's funny how you know, when you grow up and you, you you kind of uh things that you was, used to worry about fade away right have you have you ever thought about growing out your hair growing out like uh how far should i grow it let's like, see like, like long long um no so ryan rue and i are growing out our hair. Um, it's called the Lion Manes Club. Oh, really? You should uh, you should join us. We're gonna bring long hair back. Nice. So think about it, pray about it. Um, I'm I'm getting there myself. I'm coming off of a a short cut, so it's gonna take a little time. But um, yeah, we're gonna be like uh, Samson. You know, we're just gonna just grow it out until. It, Big wild mane. See what happens. Nice. So, I don't think we set a date for when we're going to stop it, but <laughs> we'll see how long our lives can, or our wives uh, put up with it, and and go from there. So, uh, you know, you take that, grow it out, nice ponytail, right? Maybe draped over the shoulder a little bit, right? Yeah. Yes. Huh. Maybe by that time, you know, you have a daughter on the scene, she can braid it. Mm. It could be a look. Just need a long beard and a and a staff. <laughs> <laughs> it could be a wizard. You're a wizard. <laughs> okay, changing gears here for a second because we're we're closing it up on an hour here. Um, I do want to talk about family faith. So, um, all of this is Michael Rosella, right? And then you were you were called here, and um, now you're you're in the the seat of the director, right? So how has it been since getting here? And like, what's your hopes and dreams? Um, boy, we've got tons of challenges. We can skip the challenges for now because, uh, yeah, that's just hard to, to chew on. But uh, let's keep it hopeful. What's, uh, what's your hope? Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, there are a lot of kids and families at St. Greg's and at oh, Family yeah. Faith Formation. Yeah. Uh as of today, we have uh, 458 yes. uh, students, not that we're counting, but uh, always trying to like <laughs> recruit more and just yes. like, pull them in any way you can. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, the thing is that we that there is a kids like to be with kids. Mm-hmm. Families like to be with families. Um, my family loves coming to church here. Um they have uh, they love the nine thirty mass, which is going to become the ten o'clock mass. Mm. But just like the children's liturgy, uh, just the fact that your baby can cry without it seeming uh, 
kids to be completely foreign. Mm. You know, just like you look around, there are kids. Um, they love coming here. They just they feel accepted by the community, by the moms, uh, and, and that is something that St. Greg's has that not everybody has. You know, and so um, you know, in family faith, tr- trying to keep the family strong, keeping the the, the uh, religious instruction and family and faith formation program strong, so that this exists in our area, so that there is a place where in person faith formation takes place, and so. Um, you know, in the, uh, in the, in the next, uh, couple months, we're coming together with the road to renewal with, uh, St. Pius and, and with good shepherd. And, um, it kind of, it's kind of funny. It's like, it, it all, it all comes around. It all comes mm-hmm. around. Kate was DRE at good shepherd at one point, actually. Um, we're talking about a small world, but, but essentially <laughs> I mean, it seems like, you know, I think that, um, you know, we're probably going to continue having options. For families, I mean, we're in the part of town where families are so busy. Yeah. And uh, from what I understand, with the plans going forward, is that uh, you know, while there's only so much we can do, we're going to try to have uh, options for the, the different families of our area, uh, so that that uh, that they can reasonably find a, a place for their children to go to faith formation. And, and we really, we really believe, and all of, all of us in our three parishes believe strongly in in-person programs. You know. Mm-hmm. That, that involve families, but also have uh, uh, classes for children. Um, and, uh, you know, there, there are just so many things that the Family Faith Formation Program just piggybacks with, essentially. There's just the different um, outreaches we have, the different layups that we give to other ministries, such as youth ministry, for example. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the family mass, uh, in collaboration with the school, uh, opportunities for teens to volunteer, uh, I could go on and on vacation Bible school, you know, 150 kids. So it, it just the, the, um, well, a lot of what we have here is what, uh, you know, I've always hoped to see more of, you know, just, mm. just like, a enthusiastic, well-formed community that's, uh, doing powerful programming for, for kids, yeah. families. It, that's one of the things I love about this parish yeah. is the, um, the real investment into the young church. Yeah. And, and actually the, the podcast episode just before this, I was talking with Father Leon about stewardship and time, talent, and treasure. And um, talking about that investment of time, talent, and treasure, especially for the young families here, is uh, just so abundant. Yeah. And this really is a place to be able to bring your young family. And yeah. you're right about, you know, not every place has that. Um, sadly enough, because it, it should be the thing that you pour everything into. Right. And, and, and another thing we, we have, you don't have to look far for um, coworkers and, and friends and volunteers who are faithful Catholics, mm-hmm. who are disciples, who you can talk to, who are just on board with the mission of Jesus and, and excited to bring kids to him because they know that this will transform their lives. Yeah. You know, and so um, just I, I think that there are a lot of uh, committed disciples here at St. Greg's. And, and so it's really it's really a great place to be. You know, honestly, I, you know, I, I, I keep hearing about how, you know, we could we could be doing this. We could have done that. But just like as a, as a kind of an outsider, it just looks so great what, what we are doing. Mm. Well, praise God for that. You know, and I think that's one of the. The other thing is that really moves this place is the people pray. Yeah. You know, and I'm not taking a stab at anywhere else, you know, because, right. you know, I'm not saying people don't pray, but you have a real uh, devotion here, I think, especially to the Blessed Sacrament, where a lot of people are making use of that Adoration Chapel, the 24 7 Adoration Chapel here. Um, you have adoration within the ministries, you, you have yeah. um, full masses. You've got people coming to really worship. And, and that matters. It's attractive. And especially when you're bringing youth up through that because they see that. They grow up in that. Um, it's hard when you go to a parish and, and there aren't youth around. They say, well, where's all the, where's all the kids? we got to yeah. get the kids. Are you inviting them? Are you bringing them? You know, what, what are you putting towards them? You know, like how are you engaging them? And, well, we don't know how to start. We don't know where to start. Yeah, it's been a battle lost for some time if you got to that place. You know, so it's going to take a lot more to – go and get them back it's not impossible though it's not impossible but here you don't have that problem as a 
<clears throat> uh, kind of in the years outside of St. Greg's, but kind of being on the peripheries of it from other parishes, uh, probably the the number one reason to go to St. Greg's is the Adoration Chapel. Mm. It's a great chapel. It's simple, yeah. but it's accessible. Well, I mean, Jesus is there. Yeah, that's the that's the number one. Jesus is there. Yeah, it's you true. Know, uh, right. I mean, how many places where you can go twenty four seven and pray? Yeah, not a whole lot. They're around. They're around, but um, they don't have that very often. And some places will offer it. You know, maybe once a month or they'll have a special time for it. Yeah, you can go into the church and have an adoration hour or something. But but I know it just pivotal moments in yeah. my life while I've been in Western New York, you know, is just often going to the St. Greg's Adoration Chapel. You know, mm. it's just, uh, that's just so powerful. I used to say to, remember I said to Joan once, uh, how it, that's, that's got to be a, a power plant. Mm. Oh, for sure. It's definitely producing kilowatts. Yeah. Kilowatts of faith. Um, I've spent a lot of time myself in there where, especially in the hard times, you know, good times are, for sure, but when it gets hard, um, you know, just going off into solitude doesn't cut it. You know, uh, there's a time and a place for that, but when you really want to juice up hearing the Lord, getting in front of Him in the Blessed Sacrament, boy, you take Scripture in with you. You just you can just sit there and catch a, a tan with Him, and worship Him. Um, boy, He really makes Himself known in the quiet. And he really works on your heart. Uh, there's been so many times when just the trials of ministry just start grinding you up a little bit. It, be able to take a walk over the chapel, spend some time. Uh, shoot, even when I'm getting out late, like after Elevate um, with the young adults, everybody goes, and it's usually a late night because people are hanging around. You got some a lot of chatter, which is great. Um, I know I, I feel like oh, I really need to get home. Everyone's in bed at this point, you know, 11 o'clock, 11.30. And I do a lap where I'll, I'll just walk the campus. And my last stop on the way around that loop is in the chapel. And I love going in there because they dim the lights and you just go in. And a lot of times nobody is in there. But we have that tabernacle that's in there. Well, they, we have the monstrance tabernacle that you just open up the doors to. And... Um, Boy, just sitting in there in the quiet, especially late at night, it's a good way to cap off the day, you know, because you can just give thanks and you can kind of offer up some intentions of, of how that day has been. But, boy, what a way to just send yourself to sleep, you know, get home and lights out, rinse and repeat tomorrow. Um, well, well, hey, man, this has been good. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. You know, it's not only just here on Coffee Talk, but thanks for being at St. Greg's. You know, it's good having you here. Yeah, I, I love so, it. Oh, amen. Well, hey, you want to close this in prayer here? Okay. All right. All right, in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, <clears throat> amen. amen. Oh, Lord, thank you for this uh, time of fellowship and brotherhood. Um, we just uh, thank you for the opportunity to uh, do ministry and for your mercies in our life. ask that you watch over our families and all the families of the parish. Pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. May the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, hey, guys, thanks for tuning in with this conversation, Coffee Talk. If this was something that you enjoyed, hey, share this to somebody else. You know, pass it around and uh, like and subscribe. So hit that like button down below and hit subscribe. Follow along because there's going to be a lot more of this coming up um, with uh, the, the coming weeks, coming months with Coffee Talk. We're going to have some great speakers on here. But Hey, if you don't have a place that you call home, a parish, consider joining here at St. Greg's because it's just a wonderful parish. It's a prayerful place, great place to raise your family, um, and especially going through the sacraments. Hey, Michael here is going to be your guy. So if you're on and that the side, team, oh, and the team, and the team, right? Yes, especially the team. Hey, hey, Megan. Hey, Kathy. Hey. So. Um, there, there's just a, a great group over in Family Faith that is taking care of your family, your kids, and you know that they're in good hands. You know that they're learning great things. It's a very faithful place. So this whole parish is a 
great spot to join. So consider being a parishioner here. And it's very easy. You just go over to the front office and say, hey, I want to sign up. And you sign up. Bing, bang, boom. That's it. So thank you very much. And we will see you next time here on Coffee Talk. I'm just going to do this and find the mouse. And it's upside down. And we're going to just, what are we doing? There it is. So thank you. Have a great day.